What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5 Mini Continents AI only battle. It's nearly turn 150, but it's probably the the right point because we'll be past 150 if we keep going. So have a look at the info addicts. Now it crashed last time, so we're, I'm here for the second time, but I did just open them before I started recording and it opened. So hopefully this time it's okay. Uh, we look yeah, it's worked. Now obviously this score graph comes up first. I can't can't do anything about that sadly, and that kind of gives a pretty grim <laughs> grim viewing. Um so yeah, the Sioux. I I assume this is the Sioux. I would I would yeah, that is the Sioux with a monstrous lead. So there you go. That's almost double whoever is in second, which I'm guessing is this is Korea like not even doing that well. Some other sieves in here is just a mess. Like at that point, I think there's five or six in that little band below. So that doesn't really help. I think Russia might be in there. Um, it's a bright yellow, so I'm guessing that's Russia. Maybe the Inca as well, because there's a tad of orange. Uh, the green is, I think, Brazil and Rhodesia. So there's a darker green and a light green that's shot up later towards the end. Yeah, but it's too tick. Rome is in there, I'm guessing. That purple line. I don't know who this light reddish line is. That that could be anyone to be like the Aztecs, probably. I don't know. But there's so many colours, like it's just a mess. We don't use graphs in this one. Who is this? Who died here? Can you maybe that's just my eyes deceiving me, because I'm Venice, right? I'm the purple line all the way along the bottom. Who is this pink line? It stops like here. They just didn't start. I don't know who that is. Maybe that's just my eyes deceiving me and it looks a bit different. Um but here we go. World fact book, that is what matters. Now I'm guessing the Sioux is probably gonna win every category based on that. So we'll have a look. Population, the Sioux is leading with the most people. Then it is Egypt, Korea, Russia, Rhodesia, India, the Shoshone, the Huns, Brazil, and the Aztecs in 10th. Crop yield, the Sioux leading again. It's Korea, the Aztecs. So they're going to be, they were at the bottom of that population list. But now with all that food, they're probably going to move up it a bit. Russia, Spain, the Huns, Rhodesia, Australia, Mongolia, and Brazil. Production, another big one. The Sioux leading that. Rome then in second, a bit of an upset. Korea, who have been second the other two times. Rhodesia in third, Spain, the Aztecs, Brazil, Huns, Mongolia, and the Shoshone. Uh, gold income, the Sioux leading the way, Korea, Brazil, Russia, the Huns, Rome, Spain, Aztecs, Rhodesia, Mongolia. I tell you what, Korea is obviously doing really good, but the rest, there's actually a good mix between like the top 10. I mean, we saw that with the lines, but yeah, there is a real mix here. Um, Korea then lead on land, ahead of the Sioux for once, although that includes the sea. So that obviously, Korea has a lot of sea tiles that are not maybe is useful the Sioux then in second both the only two over two million the Aztecs in third Spain in fourth Australia fifth Brazil Mongolia Russia Rome and the Shoshone military manpower the Sioux not dominating for once Korea well out in front here Spain then in second Russia in third the Sioux in fourth Huns fifth Rome sixth Germany in seventh surprisingly the Aztecs Egypt and Brazil Quite interesting. There's so many. Like the top 15 seems to be pretty interchangeable here. Apart from obviously it does look like Korea is going to do very well. And the Sioux are doing incredibly well as well obviously. And we'll skip over those because they show up elsewhere. Social policies. The Sioux lead the way. Then it is Rome, India, California and Rhodesia all pretty tightly knit behind. Brazil, the Inca and France. Spain and Siam filling out the top 10. Again, I'm just assuming, you now I know there's multiple on 16, I'm just hoping that it's kind of a first come first served, we'll never really know. <laughs> um, we, there is, I guess I could check, but if I check then it would just turn out the whole systems of fraud and that would not be good. Can't have, um, can't have a fraudulent system to decide our winners now, can we? Oh my goodness, what rabbit hole, let's move on quick. Didn't even, I didn't even mean that intentionally when we started and it hit me halfway through. Um, What's going on here? Who's unhappy? That's all that matters. We don't... Oh, a lot of sieves are dead. The Hazulu, Corral, they died. Oh, they were the sieves. They're the pink sieve. They they got killed off accidentally. Last time, everyone was like, I can use the kill units button. It'll work. And I think I messed something up in the settings because this time I did the kill units and they weren't coming back. They were gone. <laughs> so Morocco, Benin, America, Byzantium, Poland, and the Garamantes. The Huns, the only sieve with negative happiness. Well, there's some others who are a bit close australia for example the rest are a bit safer what do we got next technologies who's lost china fair enough one city texas yeah them and california not having a good time probably could have done with just having one of them or maybe shifting california up north could have been interesting or texas actually probably would have been the better one shift them up over the river and then have california v the aztecs that could have been made it interesting but hindsight 
I, I keep judging myself on this channel for things that I've only known in hindsight. I really need to stop because it's really bad. And I would recommend everyone else to do the same thing. Like, if it, if hindsight is the only reason you it's there, just, just you wouldn't have known. Just move it on. Don't worry about it. But yeah, on this channel, I obviously, I tend to judge myself too harshly after something. Like, it's too late. Like, it doesn't matter. But Russia leading the way by two, which is quite... I know they were ahead, so it's not a surprise they're winning. But it's surprising that they are winning, like, overall... Um, there, Rome is also up there with Korea on 49, you know, Korea very good normally, Rhodesia then on 48, Shoshone and the Sioux back on 46, it's nice to see that the Sioux are not leading in this, because this does give some other sieves a chance, obviously the Shoshone are fighting the Sioux right now, so that's quite useful the Huns in India then back on 45, Mercuria and Brazil some of the many sieves on 44 net gold, uh, we've stopped using this now, um, obviously eventually all the sieves will be negative, so it's not particularly useful statistic uh, cities, who's got one? China and Japan. Two for the Jar, Burundi and Babylon. Three for Arabia, Texas, Mercuria and Egypt. Four for Congo, Shoshone, California, Germany and Carthage. It's interesting that there is some of the good sieves still down here. Like Egypt's pretty good um, in the grand scheme of things. I mean, they're not amazing, but they're not terrible. Germany's pretty good, like we've seen. Shoshone are doing okay if they can hold off the Sioux for a little while. Five cities, there's a few more, India, Siam, Songhai, Ethiopia, Mali, and Khazaria, oh, and Great Britain. Seven, Brazil, Russia, and France. Eight, the Inca, Huns, Rome, and Rhodesia. Then it's 12, another tie, Mongolia, Australia, and Korea, all with 12. Spain and the Aztecs on 13, and the Sioux on 14, but not a massive lead. Um, but there you go. Normally there's someone with like 30, <laughs> or something ridiculous. Korea leading the way for science output with a phenomenal advantage, just like 25% more than... Um, of their own total percentages I, I always try and do it but no it goes wrong that is a big jump regardless on top of uh, Russia the Sioux then in third Shoshone fourth Rhodesia Rome France um, Australia the Aztecs and Mongolia culture output India actually leads the way then the Sioux in India almost twice as much as third place Rome and Brazil Korea down here as well Spain France Rhodesia the Aztecs and Mongolia Wonders, the Sioux have probably more than, okay, not quite, I was going to say more than the rest of the world combined, not yet, but two for India, Rhodesia, Russia, Egypt, and Britain. We won't read out everyone that has one, because it's not very fair. Treasury, some sieves spend money, some don't, so we we gloss over this, but, you know, some will, eventually they'll probably all have zero. Uh, total faith, we'll look at religion in a second, don't worry, we'll do that separately. Influence, trade routes, doesn't matter, there's a lot of fives, a couple of sixes. Um, it depends on who got the Colossus, or is it, yeah, Colossus, and then some other things as well may play a part in that. Tourism, the Sioux leads the way, then France, India, Rome, Brazil, the Huns, Babylon, Spain, Britain, and Korea. So there we go, that is that done. Where is religion? Overview. Nope, not that. Ooh. Okay, this would be useful. I, I, I've never really looked at this, but this would be useful if there wasn't so much stuff. Like I'm at, Yeah, it's only saved like six turns worth of stuff. <laughs> Um, that, that could be a useful tool for me to make better usage of. Um, what am I looking for? Religion overview, world religions, uh, number of cities. I think is there, yeah, there's one dominant religion, which is Protestantism from the Sioux in the New World, as you'd kind of expect. It's the only religion out there. And then there's a bit of a sort of second. They're a bit further apart, but Hinduism from India is doing well out in Asia. And Catholicism from Poland, who's <laughs> have been dead for a while, is doing fairly well too. There's a couple of like third, fourth, fifth, well, fourth and fifth place religions here. Zoroastrianism from the Songhai and Sikhism from Mercuria in Northern Africa, both doing okay. And then some pretty dead religions at this point. Yeah, Islam from Arabia has not spread too well and neither has Eastern Orthodoxy. So there you go. Um, who's this? Australia going order. How much left have we got this video? Oh wow, that was nine minutes. Okay, well, we'll we've got one turn probably, <laughs> knowing how long they're taking at the moment. But that's okay. We like to go in, de in depth. There's an episode, there's two episodes every three days at the moment, so it's not super bad. Um, right, I, I'm trying to work out what's going on here. Carthage captured it off the Huns, so the Huns could definitely take Constantinople back off of them. Um, I don't know if Rome is at war with Carthage, though, because obviously you'd feel like there'd be more evidence for it, right? I mean, this boat being damaged, but no, okay, that cargo ship pretty much confirms it. This is just open borders, so yes. The Huns can grab this back off of Carthage, Rome cannot, but Rome could then steal it off the Huns, which is kind of, I mean, this is a good turn for Rome, they could take, do some damage to Attila here, which weakens his chance, he's definitely getting it back, but Rome now can obviously have a spare turn 
Okay. Okay, okay. A few things happened. Let's let's go over them in the easy order. Russia grabs a city in Norway. Egypt v the Huns had already broken out. I don't, oh my goodness. Okay, no, that one's not so big. I got confused. There's two games going on at once. Some things are bigger than others. Um, Manchester's not fallen just yet. But Russia versus the Huns has broken out. And now Attila, who is obviously... At least his boats are focused down here. We'll see what his land units can do. But yeah, this it's been a long time coming. Russia going to flex that technology advantage. Let's see what happens. Korea did just enter the modern era too. It could be pretty big. And yeah, Constantinople did fall to Attila. That was pretty, pretty clear. But still, Russia will be bringing the pain, I think, for the Huns. Um, oh, Spain took another city off the Aztecs, a different one. And yeah, they're going to keep making progress. So we saw Spain have the second or third biggest military in the world. I think it was second, but I might be, yeah, because Korea was first. Um, Mongolia versus China as well. I mean, yeah, this could happen, but um, I feel like Korea is more likely just when it happens because they have artillery and stuff. Like, Mongolia is still a bit, it's just awkward to get to. I don't think it's like, you know, obviously they're way stronger, but yeah, it's just awkward to get down here. I guess this frigate could help. I don't know if it can shoot though. I guess that might help a little bit having their boats. But yeah, we'll see. Pro but I'm not expecting too much here. And Brazil just grabbed... Okay, they grabbed this city off the Inca. Yep, fair enough. And slowly, but surely, getting a bit of concern for the Inca. They are slowly withering a little bit as Brazil. Yeah, Brazil's going to get this too at some point, I would imagine. So they're slowly chipping away at the small parts of the Inca. I mean, they kept their biggest cities. To be honest, they only have two like big cities. They're not that good. I think I overhyped them a little bit. But yeah, the Aztecs are making progress, small progresses in South America, but of course are now struggling against Spain. I mean, no, his, his, is there historical realism there? I don't, I don't know. Were, were the Aztecs still around when Spain came over? I have no idea. Maybe. Probably, but I'm not sure. So that's why I never would have made the obvious reference connection in my head. I just didn't know. Someone did make a comment about Spain via the Aztecs, and I assume that was what sort of irony you were hinting at. Or it could have been the other series. I don't think so. No, because Portugal's in that one, so that wouldn't have been that one. Texas has got open borders with the Aztecs. They're just sort of moving around. Okay, game, where are we going? We're going on a journey. Why are we looking down here? What's going on? Don't know why it wants me to stare at the floor. Mercuria. Okay, so Russia. This is still not, it's not going to be easy. The border is massive, which never helps. The Huns have their cities like equally almost perfectly equally spaced out the whole way it's really weird i don't know how that's happened they're like all two three tiles apart very awkward um russia's is a little bit more tiered which makes them easier to attack but obviously i think russia shouldn't be worried about being invaded themselves here they should have this under control um yeah we'll see we'll see these boats could be useful but again warsaw's not on the coast um, but Russia does have a tech advantage. They have, don't have artillery, but these Cossack units are pretty powerful. Infantry is going to give them an advantage as well. Yeah, they're up against riflemen, so they have an edge there. They'll have a cavalry advantage. Well, the Huns don't appear to have any horses. Oh, they have one knight, so that's it. <laughs> that's it for them. Their caravan is a camel, not a horse. Does certain sieves use different things, right? Or am I getting confused? Do they all use camels? I think someone once said to me, there, was, there is something that differs, but I think, judging by what we've seen so far, they all use camels. Spain, do you have a caravan anywhere? I'm just trying to inspect. I can't see it. Oh, all the logos are camels. Yeah, I think it's all camels. I don't know if it changes. Maybe it's because I'm on low graphics or something. I don't know if it changes for some. Um, Civs, I thought it was regional. Some places, did the North Americans have something different? I might be getting this completely mixed up with something else, in which case I apologise. Um, I'll give you one more turn today. I don't know, where, where were we at timer-wise? Oh, there was 45 seconds to go. I mean, it would have been awkward to stop. Right, where? Right. I, I want to discover this now. This is important. Are they different animals? I think it's something else. It might be a different unit that has an animal involved. I can't remember. I can't even see a caravan up here, to be honest. I mean, they're all dead, right? The Sioux and the Shoshone will have deleted all their caravans when they went to war. Because they were probably only able to send them to each other. Oh no, there is one here. No, yeah, they're all camels. Okay, so it doesn't. It's not regional. I think there's something. It might be the settlers. I think it might be settlers because settlers have a horse or something with them, don't they? I can't really see. There's there's a settler here, but it is completely covered up, and there's foxes just to add to the confusion. I don't know where there's a settler just stood out in the open. That's gonna be a little. Oh, there's one. 
Uh, these guys, that is an alpaca. Yeah, I think these guys, um, yeah, I think it might be the settlers. There we go. I don't think everyone else has alpacas. I'm guessing that was an alpaca. Again, low graphics, could be very wrong. Russia and France, peace out. So that's nice. Russia will get to hold on to that with pretty much no resistance from the French. And they, they will be getting Denmark though. So I guess it's a bit of a trade. Not sure if it worked out too well for them, but there we go. Oh, and Russia has a plane. What the heck? <laughs> that was that came out of nowhere. Two planes. Um, fair enough. They are the first in the world to have access to those. Australia and the Inca have peaced out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they conquered this island. I didn't really think they'd do that much else. Australia got a few boats out here, maybe scouting out the possibility of a city, some cities in Hawaii, maybe. Siam and India now rushing three settlers towards the rest of the Indonesian islands. That should fill up most of that territory pretty soon. How is the Middle Eastern war going? Not much going on down here. Rome now has great war infantry and is still fighting for Constantinople. And obviously, yeah, the Huns are going to have to you know, split their forces here. But again, Russia is going to have a tough time because the AI will try and attack every city at the same time. Whereas, you know, if the Huns went after Russia, they'd probably all go for St. Petersburg. So that's why I guess the Hun settling pattern works because, yeah, Russia is probably going to spread out and try to go for everything at once. It's going to be awkward. But we'll see. I mean, I don't think the Huns will be going after any of Russia's cities, but there we go. We'll see what happens here. See, the more planes they get, the better. Oh, another city falling to Brazil. Oh, yeah, it was this one. We were expecting that. We were prepared for that to happen. Pretty easy city to take. Well, not easy, but pretty exposed. Um, Right, France did peace out. How are they looking? They're not looking so great anymore. Spain, they're lucky that Spain is distracted, I guess. Just doing their thing, really. You know, I thought the Aztecs were going to be our best hope. Of just like, you know, they looked like they were an explosive sieve. They were just grabbing all this land. It was looking good. And then, no, Spain has just come over and said, haha, not today. Spain aren't even doing anything that special as well. It's just Spain is quite big on this map as like a territory. So it is playing out kind of weird. There's, there's, so, <laughs> there's so many settlers and they're all in the water. So we can't even find one that would prove whether they are different animals in different places. Come on, there's got to be one around here. There's one. I bet it's too difficult. Yep, you can't even... It's not even there. Egypt's got one, and again... Uh, that is a camel, yeah. And there was... The, the Sioux one was definitely, like, some sort of alpaca thing. So I think... There we go. That, that At least I know I was right. Sort of. By the way, that is pretty cool. Look at him. He's just chilling. Alpaca. Um, the Sioux have not made much progress yet against the Shoshone. I think we did see that their militaries were pretty equal, which I think completely contradicted what that pop-up window said a few turns ago where it put the Sioux like really far in front. I don't know what's changed. Um, maybe different things are counted in each one. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, maybe I'm getting things mixed up. I'm pretty sure it said the Sioux were like miles ahead. Maybe I'm getting things wrong. But I mean, it's their turn now. Okay, it's finished. So the Shoshone should be pretty safe. Um... But there we go. Hopefully things will turn out. Oh, it's Rhodesia. Well, this is another five minutes. I don't know what Rhodesia is struggling with, but it, well, we do know. But I don't know what is that difficult. It just takes them forever to process. Maybe they're going last as well. That normally slows you down even more. Egypt is still looking okay. I mean, they're here. They've got three cities. There's no border gore. There's no mess. There's no wars. They're just, they're just living their best life here, having a good time. Plenty of units. Huge population in Thebes. Memphis is pretty big as well. I think they were second, weren't they? Was it second? Second or third. I think Korea and the Sioux might have had first and second. The Sioux definitely had first. I don't know if Korea maybe was second. And then, obviously, Seoul's pretty big. And, yeah, they have way more cities. than It would be very unfair if they were behind Egypt. But there we go. Uh, Mercuria going against the Huns too. That doesn't matter too much. Same for Great Britain. But it just shows there's maybe a bit of a anti-Hunnic sentiment going on around the world right now. Germany could be the only other Civ that would really make a huge difference against the Huns. I guess the Khazar could just be awkward and annoying with their boats. 
But yeah, Germany's the one that would need to really focus on it as well. At the moment, they're obviously very much distracted. But that will be it for this episode. So as always, if you have enjoyed... Oh, we're perfectly on 150. Oh no, but we wouldn't have been if I'd have done a full episode. Okay, I was, I was worried then. No, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.